Hello everyone, so I'm here to show you the new version of the band burner timer. This is uh, very similar to the old version. It's You can see the little green board is mounted in the middle of the this plastic case. It's just glued in there with some CA. Uh, it has a snug fit anyway. Uh, it can't fall out because these pins here are bent 90 degrees and you've got the nichrome in there so even if the glue came loose the timer would still be snug inside the, uh, the the case. What's new and unique about this timer is first of all it's very light. If we look at the weight of the timer put a scale on here Waiting for the scale to The timer with the case is 1.52 grams. If I add the battery, 2.3 grams. Okay, so it's very light. Uh, for those really hardcore weight savers, you could you can order it without this plastic case. Uh, in that case, the timer weighs only it weighs less than a gram, 0.78. So. You know, so obviously for this instance, there's not much, you'd have to make like a, you know, a nice tight recess and then carefully glue the board into your recess. Um, but once you've done that, everything else is more or less the same. Okay, and you'd also need to, you know, make an accommodation for the battery. So you can see it's light. Um, and like I said, what's new now is that I can plug the battery in on the timer on the front side and then the battery cable goes through a recess in the plastic case and sits on the back side of the timer okay so the the beauty here is that you can unplug it can be flying at the end of the day of flying you want to unplug your battery you can unplug it from the front just using a pair of tweezers or needle nose pliers and it would just sit like that. You can then plug in a charger uh, and then when you're done you can plug it back into the board. Okay, so actually I'm going to plug it in right now because I'm going to install it in my little test frame so I can show you how it works. So there you go, it's plugged in. Okay, so I'm going to install it in this frame. You can see that uh, th this is a, a tissue test frame I made for a new Japanese tissue that I'm testing. I'll hopefully have it in stock soon. Um, I was printing on this tissue to check how well it prints. So you can see I've printed the World War I Austro-Hungarian -Hung uh, swirl pattern. A very unusual uh, aircraft camouflage used by the Austro-Hungarians in World War I. Uh, and then of course I've printed the underside lozenge pattern for the undersides of German World War I aircraft. Uh, I've made a little frame uh, just out of balsa uh, with some notches for the cable to pass through uh, and I made four holes in the corners and just strengthened those holes with CA so that I can screw uh, the timer plate into my framework. So I'm just gonna put it in there right now so battery goes through first in the slot and it's just a comfortable snug fit and I'm going to use my screwdriver to put a couple of screws in and then I'll run the timer so you can see how it works You could go with as few as two screws. I don't see why that would be a problem. There's not a lot of uh, tension on the timer itself when it's in DT mode. But you could also use four. It's, it's entirely up to you. Or you can even permanently glue the timer plate into your model and not worry about it at all. 
So there you go, I'm just using two screws, one in each corner. Uh, that's plenty. You can see that the battery is plugged in now. And you can see that the battery sits on the back side. Um, there are options here. You could just leave the battery sitting here. You could even enclose the back side so it's completely closed little um, sort of box so that there's no way for the battery to flop around on the inside of the model. Uh, the cable is fairly thick so you can see the battery doesn't flop around much at all. It just sort of sits there. Uh, you could also velcro or double sided tape the battery itself to the back of the microchip and then it will just sit there adhered to the microchip. Um, on the front side you can see now that if I use a pair of tweezers I could unplug the battery, charge it and plug it in. Before I do that though I'm going to show you how it works. So here I've made a, a little sort of mock-up of a DT hook. You can see I've got a little open steel or piano wire hook. I take a dental band I hook it on, if I can see, oops, that's a broken one, there you go, and hook it on to the middle hook of my fan burner, and if I wake the timer up, timer is now awake, red light's flashing, hold, when I get the double flash, let go, and it's going to burn in five seconds. There you go. So that's the timer functioning. Um, what else? Okay, next thing I'll show you is how the. I just need to hook this up again. Uh, I'll show you how to program the timer. So I supply a little programming card with each timer. Text is small. But so it shows, first of all, it's band burner timer. It's not the E36 timer, so it tells you which timing you're dealing with. Uh, DT programming. On here, the, the symbology is P is equal press. LP is long press. So if I do, to program the timer, I need to do three Ps, or three short, fast presses. So wake the timer up. And so now I'm in program mode, and you can see there's a long, these long, slow blue flashes. Okay, so blue, slow flash. Now I want to enter the minutes menu, so I do a long press. And now I'm into minutes with a steady red light. And every time I press this, I add a minute. So I've just added one minute to my timer. If I want to go, I can go all the way up to 15, so I've done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And you see that double flash there? That went back to zero. Okay, so now I'm back at zero. So now I'm going to store this by doing a long press. And I've stored that. I've stored zero minutes and I've gone to seconds menu. So now if I press uh, once, I'm going to add 10 seconds. So now the DT time should be, instead of 5 seconds, 15 seconds. And again, long press to store and you can see now I'm back to uh, ready to, ready to fly mode. Okay, so let's do a test. So in theory Hopefully, if I haven't screwed up terribly, I can now connect up. Oh darn, that came off. There we go. I have to hook up my... Just do it like that. Okay, so now I've hooked up my DT band, and when I run the timer, we should get 15 seconds. Every time the, when the timer is running, you'll see the, 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 there'll be like an alternating red-blue flash, and each of those cycles is a one second. So, one, two, three, four, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. DT to 15 seconds. So if I wanted to go back to zero again, I could go back into the programming mode. Everything goes back to zero when you go. So when I go to the minutes, I'm back at zero minutes. Every time I do a press, I get a minute. Uh, if I cycle into seconds, it goes back to one minute, zero seconds. Okay. If I put one minute into the minutes menu and stored it, so I would have one minute. And now I'm in the seconds menu and it'll be back at one minute, zero seconds. And every time I do a press, I would add in 10 seconds to that minute, right? So I could do a minute 10 or minute 20, so on. Okay. So that is pretty much the deal. Um, what other news? So this is going to be, I'm pretty sure that this will be the version of the timer I now sell, um, the small version um, that I sell. I'll also, I also sell a charger. George Breederhoff at Valer Products also has these timers now. I'm sending him a batch, so he'll be selling them. Uh, they are uh, $65 with the case and the battery included. Uh, and there are various options to buy it without the battery, to buy it without the case, and so on, if you want to be lighter, uh, or if you want to make up your own batteries, and so on. Uh, I'll also specify an option for cable length on the battery, so I can make you, you know, a long a three or four inch cable, or I can make the standard cable like this one, which is like about an inch and a half. Um, it's it'll be up to you and, and, and it'll be recorded in a form so when you make your purchase there'll be a form that asks you to tell me uh, how long you want the cable and uh, what exactly you want uh, the cases will always be this 3d printed clear plastic so you can see the light flashing through it uh, it's nice and sealed off like you know this is I wouldn't say it's waterproof but it's water resistant um, wouldn't dump my coffee on it or anything like that uh, so that's the tiny timer. Then the other timer that's coming, uh, I'm just waiting on some parts, are these guys. And so this is essentially a larger version of the same thing. Uh, it weighs not much more. Um, but what's important about this timer is, so there's the weight of it, 2.38 grams with the battery. What's good about this timer is that it includes... Um, a charger so the charger is integrated into the timer which means that instead of having to unplug the battery you can see the battery is not even on the surface it's wired directly into the board instead of having to unplug the battery you just come along with your micro USB cable and you plug straight into the board Let me get this the right way there you go and you would charge directly uh, with a micro USB cable. So this one is going to be uh, very handy for people who want either like a modular system. So you build a case for this, it just drops into your model uh, held in with clips or something like that. Um, or you screw this into the model and you don't want to have to take it out or play around with plugs or anything. You just want to plug straight into the timer itself and charge it okay so this will be a bit more expensive I haven't worked out the pricing on these ones yet because the charge is integrated it takes longer to make them and there's more parts um, so they're going to be more expensive this one also has the option for a remote uh, start button so I'll plug in you plug your start button in there uh, and then there'll be a cable going out to some spot so for example if you wanted to be able to press a nice big button on the side of your model before you launch it. This timer could be over on, you know, off to one side, and the button could be under your thumb. Press the button, launch the model. Uh, so that option exists for this one. Actually, that kind of exists for this too. That's something you can order. You can see that there's, um, hopefully, you can see this. You can see right in the middle of the timer, there's two holes. Well, those are for a hardwired start button, so I can wire in a start button for you here that's also remote. So I could, you could have, for example, a button down here in the corner uh, that when you press it, the timer activates and the lights flash and you can program it and all that good stuff. Um, 
both of these timers have RDT options. So this one, I don't have an RDT mounted on this one. The ones I'm sending to George don't have it. But there's three pinholes there on the right. And so I can put in an RDT jack for you. Uh, and in which case, like on the back side of the timer here, you could have your RDT plugged in. Uh, I can make it also so that it comes out the front, so that there's three pins sticking out the front. So you could plug your RDT on the outside of the model. Uh, that way you can have like a timer like this in five different models. And you could have an RDT plug that you plug into uh, each model before you go fly. Uh, so those options will all be available on the website. So you can sort of customize your order for your needs. All right, I think that's everything. Uh, hope these work for you. I think that this product is now starting to get pretty nicely refined. Uh, I'm happy with it. Okay, have a good day, everyone.